Good morning. Welcome to Undisputed. I'm Jenny Tapp with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. It is Friday. We've got a packed show. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Jenny Skip. I know you can't see me. So you know now in California, you got to have a mask on if you go out in public. And I was feeling kind of like blending in with everybody else. And so I had my guy, Sharon Barber, to make me some custom Louis Vuitton and Goyard masks. I said, because if I'm going out, I'm going out in style and I'm going out with a smile. What do you think, Jenny? Why, why don't you wear the mask for this whole show so nobody can hear you? Because I would prefer not to hear you during this show. And I appreciate the fact that you're shouting out somebody who gave you a free mask to in <laughs> fact, <laughs> pay for the mask on the air. That's what's happening. I got it. Skip, well, I, got you one, I say, got you an Ernestine one. Okay. We, we got plenty. We got the no, 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 no. NC-19 or whatever it's. I don't know what it's called. But I, I wear the Louis best Louis Vuitton one. N95. So, Shannon, yeah, we yes. have that one. I got that one. Yeah. So has there ever been a more fitting day for me to wear my Lil Wayne chain, goat, on top of Junkman, goat, as the Jumpman doc, the goat doc, <laughs> drops on Sunday night. This is going to be someday here on Undisputed. It is, Skip. I'm very excited. I, I'm not going to lie, Skip. I'm excited to see this like one of these summer blockbuster movies. That's the anticipation and the buildup for this. I, don't, I can't recall a buildup for something like this in an extremely long time. I'm very excited to see it. We're all so pumped about the release of that Michael Jordan documentary. So how about we start by talking about the GOAT, Michael Jordan, because he recently said in an interview that after watching the footage back, he's worried about coming across as a horrible guy. It's also worth noting that MJ did have approval of all the footage, the final output of that documentary. So Shannon, are you surprised that Michael Jordan is worried about coming across as a bad guy? No, because Skip, you know Michael, he wanted to make sure his best foot was always forward. If you notice, he never did an interview with him all sweaty. He was always buttoned up. He would get fully dressed. He would put that gold earring in his ear. He would be a suit, shirt, tie. He wanted to make sure he was impeccable. He wanted people to only see that side of him. And then when he was on the court, he was all out, but very few people got an opportunity to get a glimpse in, at this. Skip, when we talked about this, I think it was a little over six weeks ago about this documentary, I said there's no way that Michael Jordan is going to let all this release without having, some kind of say, without having some kind of say, some kind of approval in what's being out there. That's just the way he is. He likes control, and most people, Skip, when you're doing a documentary about my life, absolutely I'm going to have some say what gets released. But Skip, I think the notion is, is that people tend to think that if you're successful and you're, you're, you're an athlete, everything is he's a choir boy, he's good in two shoes, he didn't hurt anybody, he didn't offend anybody, and that's farthest from the truth. The more accomplished a person is, the more driven they are. And the more they will not only step on you, they will roll over you in order to accomplish their goal and make sure you're, you're in the right frame of mind to help them accomplish that goal, and they will bring you along. So I am not the least surprised, Skip, because Michael Jordan has done everything since he burst onto the scene in 1982, Skip, almost 40 years ago. He's done everything to protect his off the court because a lot of this documentary, yes, Skip, we're going to see him on the court, but a lot of this is in the locker room. A lot of this is on plane rides and on the bus and you're going to, and practices, and you're going to get us, and our people will see Michael Jordan in a totally different light. Now, it's not going to change my perception of Michael, but I'm sure some people are like, man, Mike was a nasty mofo. Ooh, Mike was dirty. Oh, I can't believe Mike was like that. Believe it. He was like that, and he should not have to apologize. But Skip, Mike gave you a, a, a kind of glimpse into what he was like at his Hall of Fame speech. Hall of Fame, <laughs> your speech is supposed to skip a celebration a culmination of the ultimate validation. You're going to your sports heaven. And he took a chance to take a shot at every single person that he feel had wronged him and his speech. So I am, not, I am not surprised 
that Michael uh, uh, is somewhat like, man, how am I going to bet? They're going to look at me in a totally different light. I'm not surprised by that. So, yes, Skip, I'm not surprised, but I'm still anxious to see it, and it's not going to change my perception of him. I'm interested to hear how you how you feel about it. Okay. I believe that as we speak, Michael Jordan is scared to death that he's going to come across <laughs> as a horrible guy in this documentary. Even though he had the executive uh, editorial control of this, he signed off on every last inch of the footage that you're about to see in the 10 part documentary. He had total control. But I believe mm-hmm. deep down, he's saying, I could be damned if I do and damned if I don't. He really wanted this documentary to happen. He needed it to happen right now. We're going to talk deeper about the whys of it a little later in the show. But I'll just give you a glimpse of the whys in my estimation. I believe he does get sick and tired of hearing that LeBron James is the new GOAT. And I believe he gets sick and tired of hearing a lot of times from me, the biggest Michael Jordan fan, that he is the absolute worst general manager, team builder in the history of the NBA, mostly with the Charlotte Hornets. So the point is, as he approaches age 60, he's turned 57, he starts thinking, gee, maybe it's time. I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on IG. Maybe I should do one big epic documentary. But to do so, the the uh, you know sort of the producers involved they're they're all saying well gee Michael we we gotta we gotta be real here and he's trying to be as real as possible and I'm trying with you today to be as real as possible I think there's a double edged sword operating and yesterday you basically accused me of hey you got too close to him in Chicago mm-hmm. and you kind of pulled your punches on him. Well, sometimes maybe I do because I love the guy, but I love the horrible side of him. So today, I'm trying to be painfully honest with you. That side of him, there's a side, a big side. He's not a nice guy. What have I told you from the start about LeBron James? (laughs) He's too nice of a guy. So Michael was the ultimate cold-blooded basketball killer, and you're going to see that in this documentary And on the flip side, LeBron can beat you with his supreme talent, but it's not natural to him. It doesn't come natural to LeBron to be a cold-blooded basketball assassin. That's not his nature. That was Michael's nature. Mm -hmm. So that nature you're going to see behind the scenes, behind closed doors, is the nature that drove the rest of his teammates to try to achieve his level. So, yeah, he got in fist fights in practice with Steve Kerr and Will Perdue of Vanderbilt University. And, yeah, you're going to see in this documentary, he is psychologically just pushing and intimidating (laughs) poor Scott Burrell, who was the 20th overall pick in the 93 draft. And Michael just was all over him every minute to try to live up to being the 20th pick in the first round of the draft. And you're going to see the guy behind closed doors who was – He was a horrible guy in a great way. So that's the side I always embraced. And that's the side that I think a lot of people are going to say, man, that's not the guy I saw in Space Jam in 1996. That that guy in Space Jam, that was the cartoon superhero who was Michael Jordan. He, He wasn't that behind the scenes. And I've always told you. All the things that I got to see as I as I was around him through the 98 season, the last dance season, they they weren't always pretty to watch. But they contributed (laughs) to winning a six championship in six tries with six finals MVPs because it takes that horrible side of him to be that great. So to me, I I do think he's going to sit back because, Shannon, my final point, I'm going to turn it back to you is. Michael Jordan was was even more protective of his image, even more guarded in his image than LeBron has ever thought about being. Because a lot of times LeBron will curse publicly or he'll do things. He'll get mad at teammates on Twitter between the lines. It's that sort of passive aggressive. He'll do it publicly. And that's not a pretty Mm -hmm. sight to me. So he doesn't care that much about his image. 
But Michael cared about his seeker, uh, his sneaker selling image, probably to a fault. He, Skip, and I think the thing is, is that there's a, a, a public persona of Mike and then there's a private persona. And now that he's allowing the private persona to come out, maybe he's looking back. Did I really have to do it like that? Now, Skip, he's not going to apologize for what he accomplished. But I think sometimes that, Skip, we get to a certain destination. And I, I, I'm, look, I'm not, I, look, I won't preface this. I'm not saying I'm Michael Jordan. But there have been times I look back and wonder if I could have done it differently and got the same results. Um, and, and that's wishful thinking. Now, I don't, I don't regret anything that I've done because I don't know, I'm not necessarily sure that I could have got it to this point without being that way, Skip. I remember when I got to John, John was a great player, and I'm not saying John Elway is, is, is Michael Jordan, but he would say things that he wanted to make sure that Shannon and the other guys was ready come game time. So he would uh, he would do certain things, not to this. I mean, John wasn't trying to get no quarterbacks at a different level, Skip. They ain't trying to fight anybody. Nobody's really trying to fight the quarterback. But I'm saying great players, they need to make sure. Skip, I wanted to make sure, Skip, when I because come fourth quarter, I need to know who I can count on. So when, when Mike asks a question or head coach asks me a question, what play should we call? If I can't get it, well, throw the ball to him because I know he's ready. Well, Michael Jordan says, hold on, I need to, I'm going to be ready. I need to know, Scotty's going to be ready, but I need to know who else is going to be ready. So I'm going to push buttons come practice time. I'm going to push buttons behind the scene so I'll know who I can count on. Skip, look, when you look at Mike, we think of McDonald's and we think of Gatorade and everybody want to be like Mike. And Mike said, hell, when they see this, they ain't going to want to be like Mike. They're going to like, forget Mike. Yeah. But Skip, he shouldn't worry about that. He should make no concessions <laughs> about what he was, ha because Skip, look, <clears throat> when you, and I think that's what happens, Skip, we have some public people.